Incredible Hulk is not known for his intelligence. That responsibility falls on the shoulders of his alter ego, Bruce Banner. But this isn't always the case for gamma irradiated monstrosities of muscle. I'm Adam Andrews, and today on Top 10 Nerds, the top 10 smartest alternate versions of the Hulk. Coming in at number 10 today, it's Hulk Hogan. It's Hulkamania, brother. First appearing in Iron Man number 227 in his prime of October 1987, Hulk Hogan witnessed Iron Man defeating Beetle, who tried to steal a Picasso painting from a celebrity charity auction. This moment for Hogan really only lasted about one page, and all he did was go, body slam, use a body slam. And he didn't even say brother, so like that doesn't really count. But. Sometime later, in Marvel Comics Presents number 45 from March of 1990, Hogan Bogan takes on the Grey Hulk in his Mr. Fixit persona when they wrestled for the rights to use the Hulk name. Hogan may just be a man, but he seems to be able to take a beating from Fixit and even dish out a few hits of his own before Fixit sends him and his amazing handlebar mustache flying out of the arena and landing miles and miles away into someone's living room. And that's one hell of a defeat, brother. Man, there was so much energy for that. <laughs> I gotta slow down. Okay. And we're gonna become calm now. Here we go. Coming in at number 9 today is Maestro. The Incredible Hulk has certainly been through the ringer in his decorated career, but few versions of the character are the living embodiment of that fact like the Maestro is. An alternative version of Bruce Banner from an apocalyptic future, this version of the character is far more intense and complex than his Earth 616 counterpart. The best way to describe Maestro is to say that he is basically a smarter, older, villainous version of Dr. Bruce Banner with all the powers and abilities of the original, but with a touch more nuclear radiation due to the conflict that created the dystopian wasteland he comes from. He has much more of a cosmic and spiritual side than the normal Hulk does, but he is also twice as strong as Hulk is, and he retains all the intelligence of Bruce Banner, but with years and years more experience and basically no morals. Despite all that extra strength, brain power, and experience though, he still gets outmaneuvered by the Hulk who sends Maestro back in time to the site of the gamma bomb that created him. But even then, the maestro's spirit remained on the bones left behind after the gamma explosion went off and he returned. This bearded green behemoth has been a fan favorite character since his introduction in the Future Imperfect storyline, and his backstory, fighting the Human Torch, Doctor Doom, Namor the Submariner, and Abomination, among others, is pretty intense and a really fun read. Number 8. Aborigine Hulk have you ever heard of the House of M? I would assume that you have. It's when Wanda Maximoff changed reality to make the mutant Magneto the ruler of the world with his family. Well, in this world, when Bruce Banner transformed into the Hulk after the Gamma Explosion, it is believed by Mr. Ross that he is a spy of Magneto and he is hunted down like normal. But not like normal, he travels all the way to Australia and he settles in with a group of Aborigine where he becomes a part of their tribe and finds an inner peace with Banner and the other guy. But of course, the conflict between the mutants and the last remaining resisting humans finds its way to the outback and onto the territory of this aborigine tribe. With a kind of control over the Hulk persona, Hulk and Banner help the humans halt their persecution by their mutant overlords, eventually helping AIM to rule Australia. There's this really cool moment where the Hulk is using a whale to cover a submarine, and it looks super amazing, and it's actually kind of smart. Number 7. The MCU Hulk. While the Hulk in the MCU, played wonderfully by Mark Ruffalo, is initially depicted as more impulsive and primal, as the MCU progresses, a more intelligent side of the Hulk emerges. The Hulk's intelligence evolves over time, ranging from childlike simplicity to a level of reasoning that eventually equals Banner's genius. In Avengers Age of Ultron, the Hulk displays a connection with Natasha Romanoff that showcases a depth of emotion and complexity, but he still retains his childlike intelligence. By Avengers Endgame, however, his intelligence is far more evident as the Hulk merges his bronze with Banner's brains, becoming a merged entity known as Smart Hulk. This version has Banner's intellect, the Hulk's physical might, and a more balanced emotional state, and it is essentially a version of the Hulk that is copied straight from Earth 616's own Incredible Hulk. This portrayal adds layers to the Hulk's character, demonstrating that his intelligence isn't just a result of Banner's consciousness, but an amalgamation of both personas. And it also allows Mark 
Mark Ruffalo to be his awkward normal self, but green and big, which is always fun. Number six, Amadeus Cho. Now, unlike almost every other Hulk here, Amadeus Cho is not from an alternate universe to the main 616 Incredible Bruce Banner Hulk. By 15, Amadeus Cho was the seventh smartest person on the planet with a mind that functioned like a hypercomputer, but that also put a target on his back and led him to become friends with another genius, a guy you may know called Bruce Banner. Cho first popped up on the scene back in 2005, but it wasn't until 10 years later in 2015 when the Hulk got stuck with a dangerous amount of a new type of radiation that Amadeus took on a different form. Using special nanites, Amadeus absorbed the Hulk's powers, becoming a gamma powered monster and the totally awesome Hulk. But unlike Bruce, Amadeus found himself having much more control over his Hulk persona and prided himself on being a better and smarter Hulk. Unfortunately, over time, that wouldn't completely last, especially when he exiled himself to find control and ended up on Sakaar. When he finally came back to Earth and declared war on his enemies, he had to be stopped by his allies, and in doing so, they injected him with nanites that countered the ones he himself had placed inside of himself. Omnius didn't lose his Hulk powers, instead, he retained just a portion of the power and his darker side, and now goes by the superhero name Braun. Number five, Old Man Hulk. Probably the most disturbing version of Hulk I've ever seen would have to be Pappy Banner in the Old Man Logan story by Mark Miller. After the villains took over the world, it is believed that Banner and the Hulk received extra doses of radiation from the atomic devices used in California, which caused Bruce to become just a little bit unhinged. Hulk procreated with Jennifer Walters, his first cousin, creating kids who also had children, and together they all formed the Hulk gang that viciously rule over Hulkland, which is primarily the whole of the west coast of the USA. Running that kind of an operation takes some intelligence. Now, before you all tell me he didn't do this with Jennifer Walters, like last time I said that, here is the comic panel of him saying that. Okay, now that that's out of the way, this version of Bruce actually has the strength of the Hulk when still in his Bruce Banner form, which is really interesting and also shows that he is still intelligent while being super strong. But when angry enough, Bruce will transform into a massive, almost 30 foot tall Hulk who still had the same intelligence and was able to eat old man Logan whole before Logan regenerates and tears himself out from the inside, but he still managed to survive with his head being attached to a robotic body, which is also super cool. Number four, She-Hulk. The lawyer Jennifer Walters is Bruce Banner's first cousin and probably the closest thing he has to a sibling. It just so happened that as Bruce was seeking some legal aid from Jennifer, she was nearly sent to the afterlife during an assassination attempt. And it's kind of crazy how much that seems to happen in comic books. Well, Bruce saved her life by giving her an emergency blood transfusion fusion, but as a result, she became the She-Hulk. Although she started out as a bit of a savage She-Hulk, when she appeared in issue one of her comic in 1980, Jen's normal personality eventually became dominant when she was in her gamma-powered form, giving her access to her intelligence as an incredibly skilled and successful lawyer. In fact, she actually prefers being She-Hulk even in her day-to-day -day activities, and she puts her skills to use as an Avenger and member of the Fantastic Four. Number three, Hulk 29. This version of the Hulk appearing in the awesome possible future of 2099, where Spider-Man 2099 makes his home, is a guy named John Eisenhart. He was a corporate lawyer for big movie studios who went to go and coerce a group called the Knights of Banner, who were a cult-like group of warriors who followed the ideologies of Bruce Banner. John was going to gain the rights for their name in order to make a movie about them, all while giving them nothing in return. He turns them into this corporation called Sweet Dreams, thinking they'll be brought in peacefully. But it doesn't really go that way. The only knight of Banner who survives, a kid, goes to a gamma machine, but John saves the kid, pushing him out of the way and being blasted with gamma radiation. John can now turn into the Hulk whenever he wants. He has a super strong prehensile tongue, and he is much more beast-like with massive claws. But he is just as powerful as regular Hulk, but unlike the regular Savage Hulk, John retains his intelligence. That intelligence may not be Bruce Banner levels, but John is 
a skilled attorney, and that makes him more intelligent than the childlike green goliath that we are used to. Number 2. Tyrone Cash Professor Leonard Williams, aka Tyrone Cash, was originally a brilliant British scientist working at Cambridge University. He was working on a version of the super soldier serum when Bruce Banner joined his team. Like Banner, Williams hated his own body, and like Banner, Williams had his own agenda for wanting to perfect the process. Once the serum was completed, Williams took it and went from Banner's mentor to his predecessor as the Hulk. He took out several people and escaped from the university and has been on the run ever since. He abandoned his old life, allowing everyone to believe he was actually deceased, using his incredible intellect to evade capture for like 16 years. Williams adopted the name Tyrone Cash and became a ruthless gangster, taking out and pillaging the property and wealth of gang leaders and criminals throughout Africa and Asia in the Ultimate Universe. And finally, in at number one today, it's Monk. Of all the alternate Hulks we've got here, none are quite like Monk. Monk comes from a little alternate universe story called Five Ronin, which sees feudal Japanese versions of Wolverine, Punisher, Psylocke, Deadpool, and of course, the Hulk. What's interesting here is that none of these characters seem to have the superpowers that make them superheroes in the regular 616 universe. Or if they do, their powers are extremely subtle and low key. And an excellent example of that is the Hulk slash Monk. From reading Hulk's issue of the 5 issue story, we can gather that Monk used to be a ferocious samurai back in his day. Monk is a massive man and he wielded a massive sword. But in his warrior rages, he would do some pretty unspeakable things and because of the last one to happen, he swore himself off of the warrior life and instead decided to set his roots on the top of a mountain in a sort of sanctuary just trying to find inner peace. Even when the nearby villagers came to the former samurai for help against some bandits, he refused until he was visited by a ronin with a mouth who convinced him to use his rage one last time. And that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching today on Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host Adam Andrews and I'll catch you all on the flippy flop. Peace out nerds.